Hello, I'm Esra Özcan. I'm a scholar of communication studies teaching at the Department of Communication at Tulane. The title of my book is Mainstreaming the Headscarf, Islamist Women and Politics in Turkish Media. In the book, I tell the story of the rise of authoritarianism in Turkey during the past 18 years between 2002 and 2020. I was particularly interested in how women journalists on the Islamist right have contributed to the loss of democracy in Turkey. I am a communication scholar, but the book is not only about communication studies. My imagined readers are also interested in political science, sociology, anthropology, and gender studies. Let me give you some background information about the subject. During the 1990s and early 2000s, sociologists and political scientists categorized Turkey as a democracy with some deficiencies. So it was a democratic country, but not democratic enough. I was an undergraduate student in Istanbul in the 1990s, majoring in sociology. As that generation of sociology students, all we wanted politically was a stronger, better democracy with more rights for all. In Turkey at the time, the groups that were marginalized the most were the Kurds, Alevites, various leftist groups, and finally, religious women wearing headscarf because there was a ban on headscarf in the universities. Adult women over 18 who wanted to wear a headscarf were not allowed to do so on university campuses. So we wanted more rights for all these groups. Turkey was a multi-party democracy during the 1990s. There were several parties on the left and several parties on the right. Three political parties dominated the right at the time. First, there was the secular right, which was also the center right. There was and still is an ultra-nationalist fascist right. They believe in the superiority of Turks as an ethnic group over the other uh, ethnic groups in Turkey. And finally, there was the Islamist religious right. The religious right wanted a government and a society organized on the basis of religion and religious conservatism. In Macy Dreaming the Headscarf, I'm telling the story of how Turkey's religious right mobilized the issue of headscarf and the feeling of injustice around it to establish alliances with the liberal democrats, the feminists, and other pro-democracy constituents in the country. Religious right came to power in Turkey in 2002 under the leadership of Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who is the current president of Turkey. Erdogan successfully transitioned the country from a democracy to an authoritarian regime in around 16 years. He has now power over the three branches of the government, executive, legislative, and judiciary branch branches. The media as the fourth estate is also under very tight control. In the book, Mainstreaming the Headscarf, I'm talking about how the pro-Erdogan women journalists have contributed to this process of loss of democracy. I analyze their argumentative strategies in, in favor of Erdogan about a variety of issues, ranging from foreign policy issues to women's rights. I argue that 
throughout this process of transitioning to authoritarianism, women of the religious right in Turkey have succeeded to make their understanding of women's rights as the new mainstream, as the new common sense. There is no headscarf ban in Turkey anymore, but practicing headscarf has been encouraged and idealized at the expense of women and men who don't want to organize their lives on the basis of religious conservatism. In the book, I also reflect on the choices made by Turkey's liberal democrats and feminists during the 1990s and the, and the early 2000s. In hindsight, I wonder if Turkey's liberal democrats and feminists could stop or prevent the rise of authoritarianism had they made different choices. The book lays out some of the tricky debates on the road to authoritarianism and to the collapse of our basic, formerly agreed upon concepts, such as women's rights and democracy itself. Thank you very much.